to coach. Are you happy with eight goals in two periods? I know it's just a scrimmage and it's your squad, but uh, I mean, what, what, what did it look like to you overall over there? I thought the scrimmage uh, had less of a summer hockey feel to it than the first one. I thought there were better things there. Um, I thought the first half, I didn't think I didn't love a lot of our things we were doing defensively. But, um, you know, obviously from a coaching standpoint, you you want to you want to play good defense. But, you know, I, I love scoring goals. You know, you gotta win, if you're going to win hockey games, you better score goals. So um, there is a balancing act. You can do both. You can play good defense and you can score goals. Obviously, when you're coaching both teams in the scrimmage, uh, something's got to give and take. So, um, you know, we'll watch it again and, and get a better feel of what went on. We talked to who you are in. Uh, we feel like you're still a little uncomfortable with us. And if you get the idea that there's a lot of personality behind what he's putting up in front of us, um, do, you, can, do you get that idea? And can you just tell us a little bit about his personality? Yeah, he doesn't say a lot, but he certainly uh, he smiles a lot when he hears people making fun of everybody. And when he, part, when he gets involved in conversations, he's very comfortable. You know, I think I love the fact that he's comfortable and, he, and he's got a lot of confidence. And we talked about his swagger and... He just doesn't have it off the ice. He has it on the ice. He has it off the ice as well. So you can definitely—he has a personality. This isn't a guy that you know sits and, and keeps to himself. I mean, I think he's a guy that, you know, once he does get more comfortable, uh, there probably will be more interaction with his teammates and whatnot. But that being said, uh, you know, he seems to enjoy enjoy his teammates, and they enjoy him. Yeah, David, can you just take us back to, you know, when we spoke to you last summer, I know we're going back a ways, but when you guys first got Panarin, you had stated that your intention was to play him with Mika. And then within a month or so of the season, that was split up, and, and we saw how things unfolded from there. But I'm curious, what were the conversations like when you guys decided to make that change? And then with the way that it unfolded, how did it become clear to you that that was the, the route you guys wanted to go? I touched on this a lot. There was just so much uncertainty of what was, how our line combinations were going to unfold. And, you know, I'm a big believer in putting your best players together. Um, sometimes that's not the best thing to do for the group, and sometimes there isn't the instant chemistry. And just the way the whole thing happened, you know, we were constantly talking to these guys about line combinations and who to play with. And, you know, Mika got hurt. So that kind of, I think that's when this whole thing kind of really started, when we ended up putting Strom and bred together, that's kind of what happened. And I think it just happened from that you know, in a lot of ways. So I probably, I think we had probably made that move a little bit earlier than that. But I think once those guys, while Mika was out, I think that kind of, that combination kind of evolved. And, you know, obviously Mika had had chemistry with Kreider and Bucci before. So the whole thing just uh, fell into place. Coach, you mentioned how you got, you and your staff have mapped out this entire camp. Looking forward to that scrimmage against the Islanders. It's a it's a meaningless game, but obviously you're going to use it to determine what you want to see. Is that a double-edged sword? Where you know obviously you know you can't protect the player from injury. It, it happens. It happens. But what's your feeling about that scrimmage, and what are you hoping to gain from it? Yeah, obviously it's another opportunity to get in game shape and prepare ourselves for the first. And you know our guys are going to play, and they're going to play hard, and they're going to play it like a real game. It's the only way to do it. I mean, if you're going in there. Like you said, not trying not to get hurt. I think inevitably you will get hurt. So you've just got to go play hockey. And you know, we're scrimmaging here, and I want them to play hockey here, and I want them to play with a, the mentality they're going to have when we play on the first. And I know that's hard to do when you're playing against your own team, teammates, and it's only been a week. But you know, we're trying to you know we're trying to get there brick by brick, and uh, that's just and that's just another opportunity for us to put another brick on the pile. You do have just a one scrimmage. Um... I don't know what your, and I wouldn't ask you what your plans are going to be for how you uh, use your lineup that in that game. But do you have to have a decision made on, you know, whether it's your goaltender or or anything else before you get to Toronto? In other words, I'm pretty sure you can't play each goalie one period in that scrimmage. So I mean, do you have to have an idea which which guy it's going to be, and then you know work to develop that guy and get him ready? Um, like I said, we'll probably sit down here on, on Monday and uh, tomorrow during the off day and talk about things of that nature. I think there's a lot of things we want to readdress here after uh, spending a week together and you know having a week of practices and kind of getting a feel of where we're at. So that's something that we'll talk about. I'm not sure what we're going to do in that scenario. So again, that's uh, 
under these unique, unique circumstances, it's, uh, it really is a day-by-day -day situation.